Oh, look at that. Look, hoo hoo, someone is beside me by the blind spot indicators. Sweet, I've been looking for that album. I don't know if you know this about me, but I collect old records, particularly ones that deal with the evolution of driving. Like, like this gem I found today, hand signals by the Turners. Or this, this golden oldie, safety first by the lap belts. I love it. This year, on the nation's most evolutionary automotive show, we're focusing on how technology has changed and is changing driving. Like, uh, oh, there it is. Like, where am I? By the backup cameras. Now, I know that these days, the backup camera's beep, beep, beeping kind of rhythm does sound pretty progressive, but I always think that one day that beep, beep, beep music is gonna be, well, just as archaic as a seatbelt that only goes around your lap. As always on our television show, we will be teaching and testing the lousiest motorists in the nation. And as always, when it's all said and done, ooh, someone will be named Power Steering. Of course they will be named Power Steering. I just made that up. Someone, someone will be named Canada's worst driver. I gotta take my foot off the gas for a second to get your pants off. Over 600 were nominated, and just seven were chosen. Now, only six licensed drivers remain in the running to receive this nation's most embarrassing automotive award. I wasn't being injured because I was focused on... Something else. Something else. Something else. The title, Canada's Worst Driver, might go to... You Garris, an aggressive road rager from Calgary. Or it might be Alexis, who had her first crash just five days after getting her license. They can't air this, my dad will kill me, but yes, I was texting. Since then, careless Alexis has crashed multiple times every year, including once with her baby. Oh my God. Perhaps Canada's worst driver is Desi. Doing 150. A mother of two who says she's written off 20 cars. Some people drink, some people smoke, some people do drugs, and I wreck cars. <laughs> Carlene was wrecked by a car. I hate this. Carlene hates driving. I think I'm done because she was hit by a vehicle while walking back in 2005. <laughs> the next Canada's Worst Driver nominee says she's had between 20 and 30 accidents. And according to Brittany, she was on her cell phone for each and every one of those accidents. Oh, what was that? The final nominee? What the f Brandon has written off five cars. You, you, you. In just 10 months of driving. Okay, just everybody shut the, everybody shut the up. I'm having a stroke. Brandon. Knowing where your wheels are while driving has confused bad drivers since the birth of the automobile. But these days, Anyone can know exactly where their wheels are by having a bird's eye view camera installed in their vehicle for about $1,500. If you get one of these systems put in, well, you can see your car from above, and on the other screen, you can see where you're going. No mystery, that's where all your wheels are. And if you shift into reverse, well, the other screen shifts into a rear view camera. Will Canada's worst drivers utilize the bird's eye view camera system we've installed into their vehicle for our annual Know Where Your Wheels Are challenge called The Rails? We're about to find out. The Rails are two steel I-beams that drivers must traverse going forwards and then backwards. Before Carlene rides the rails, 
She's explaining what life was like before her accident to Shamala Kiru, who's been our resident therapist here at the rehab center for seven years now. I went from a strong person who was busy and active to a a whiny, angry person. At what point did you decide that you were gonna start taking control of your life again? Three years ago. Three years ago. What happened three years ago? Has been asked before. On the Rails course, Carlene has told her husband, Daryl, not to speak. Me too, you left. Let me, let me do this. But without his help, Carlene can't even make it over the ramp. Without your help, I can't do anything. Darris will show you how it's done. Check out the modern technology. Oh, wow. It's called a bird's eye view camera, so you see above everything, and you'll see uh, behind. Well, wow. I'm not gonna use that technology, it's crazy. Darris's mother, Jen, doesn't think it's crazy. No, because you can see on top in case you're gonna go off. Darris gets onto the rails without using the bird's eye view. But when he starts veering off... Oh, I can feel it. The technology suddenly becomes useful. Are you using that magic screen? Yeah? Yeah? The evolution of driving involves screens, and they work. The evolution of Darris as a person involves a car crash that he experienced at age 12. Do it in reverse, okay. In that crash, his favorite cousin was killed while sitting right beside him. Look at your back wheel. You can look at your tire, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. The after effects of that tragedy don't seem to be causing him any trouble here today. You can see the truck, too, right here, babe. But on public roads, Darris drives recklessly because of what he calls his death wish. I kind of thought that he was just going to get angry and crash into everything when he showed up, but no, nah, the kid can drive. What the f You did it, babe. Yes. Oy, oy, oy. Woo! Darris exhibited no rage at all on this challenge. And now he's telling Shamala that the driver rehab center has cured him of road rage. I think a lot of the aggression came from me depriving myself of emotional feelings. And now, you know, I just I want to focus on doing the right, not the wrong. You know, I, I want to be more positive. I want to have a better outlook on things. I want to learn. I want to be honest with you. So for me, it doesn't feel like you're being completely authentic. Mm-hmm. OK. Why, why do you say that? I'm not saying that change can't happen. Absolutely it can, but it usually doesn't happen this quickly. It usually doesn't. You're right. But you're saying that you have changed. That's exactly what I said. Alexis succeeds going forward on the rails, but instead of preparing for the reverse, she just hopes to get lucky. Do you want your mirror set up on this side to help? No, we're good. That's Jerry, the professional driving instructor who taught Alexis how to drive five years ago. We're you're good. good? We're good. Like, you're we're good because you're yeah. set up properly, or...? No, we're good. She's not good at all. Oh. Mm. <sighs> Desi also succeeds going forwards, Yeah. And also fails to use the tools we provided for the reverse. Uh, I'm scared. You're good. That's Drew, Desi's close friend. I'm scared. <sighs> no. Brittany will ride the rails with me and her new bird's eye view camera. Oh, I am on it. See? The magic of science. Yeah. And it works for her. We did it. She did it going forwards. 
but Brittany refuses to even try in reverse. I lack confidence in every area of my life. Brandon broke his arm just days before beginning here at Driver Rehab. Okay, so, okay, um. But he is still legally able to drive. And he does drive successfully forward across the rails with the aid of a spinner knob. You did it. That's Sarah, Brandon's best friend. I did it. I did it. <laughs> yes. Have you ever been that happy because you drove 30 feet? Time for backwards. Before coming to rehab, Brandon had never really reversed. I can't reverse if I have both of my arms. When we come back, Brandon! Canada's worst drivers race in reverse. He didn't see that. He didn't see it anyway. He didn't see it, didn't count. Next contest is a race done entirely backwards. But before the action can begin, Canada's worst drivers will be getting a complete reversing lesson from the czar of the car, the royalty of reverse, Tim the Golf Chart. Tim, the golf shirt danter, is the head driving instructor here at the rehab center. And today, he'll be teaching a reverse lesson to two drivers at a time, starting with Brittany and me. We have a camera in today's car, all right? Okay. You can use it to assist you. Do not rely on it. Before using an unfamiliar backup camera. So where do I vanish? It's important to understand exactly what it's showing you. Now, my hand is about four inches from the bumper. How do you reverse in a straight line? So, I put my left foot over here on the dead pedal and push a bit. Okay. Okay, and then I put my right hand behind the passenger side headrest. Okay. And that helps pull myself around. Now, you told me yesterday you can't reach the dead pedal. I can't, no, on most vehicles I can't. Just push off the floor, pull your body around, Always put my hand at 12 o'clock. Having your hand at the 12 o'clock position on the top of the wheel allows for easy steering adjustments in both directions. You may use the door mirrors for reference. But where are you looking mostly? Out the back window. The head-to-head -head course is simple. Drivers will simultaneously reverse down these lanes. Once they reach this circle, they must get turned around and reverse back to the start line. Unlike boxing, the only way to win this battle is by not hitting. Brittany, did you know that in the province of Ontario, you do not have to wear a seatbelt when reversing? No, I didn't know that. That's true. You don't have to wear one if you don't want to. On your mark, get set, go! Is my wheel straight? See, if you put your arm around the passenger seat and look out the back window, that's all the information you need. Look at her go. She's beating me. Oh, I think she just passed. Oh, oh. Passing Andrew now. Joining Tim and Shamla to watch every move that Canada's worst drivers make is our legal expert, Cam Woolley. And our high speed driving instructor, Philippe Letourneau. <laughs> Very good start. At the end of each episode, these experts help me decide which driver should graduate and go home. At the end of our series, they'll help me decide who will be named Canada's worst driver. I didn't even see that. I broke that. The whole idea never hit anything, and I'm not gonna. Let's just block him in here, because then we'll win. Brittany can't win. 
because she's already hit something. Is that the first time you've reversed like that? Arm around the passenger seat, looking out the back window. You shouldn't look at me when you're backing up. You should look where you're going. I'm going back to the laneway, but not Brittany. I'm going to go that way. Ooh. Whoop. Well, I'm going to hit that. That's no good. So I'm going to go forward, reposition, get my wheels straight, just like Tim told me to, hand at 12 o'clock, arm around the passenger seat, and boogie on back. While I boogie, Brittany continues hitting. Ah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. If you follow Tim's simple lesson, you can reverse in a straight line all day long. It does work, doesn't it? Most spots. Before rehab, Brittany never reversed. You gonna reverse when you go home? Hopefully. Hopefully. Brandon and Alexis are the next pair. So what's your technique in backing? I look at my camera. 100%. 100%. Once Alexis learns how to reverse properly... You're in this position, you're looking back out the rear window. It's broken arm Brandon's turn to learn. You're not going to be able to turn around and look out the rear window because that would require you to use your left hand. So you're going to have to use the door mirrors and this. Your eyes are going to have to bounce around more. Brandon thinks this technique is beyond him. What makes you think you can't do this now? Because I've, I, I, I've probably reversed less than three times in my driving career. OK. Enough with the talking. It's time to race. Lady and gentlemen, start your engines. <laughs> Jeez, don't keep on starting. You Sorry. turn it once, it catches, you let go. Ladies and gentlemen, turn your engines off. <laughs> Let's talk about how you start a car. Sorry, I was nervous. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. If you keep the key turned after the engine catches, now turn your key again. You can ruin your starting motor. OK, never do that. On your marks. Get set. Set? Set. No, you're not. Get set. Oh, ha. Yeah, ha. Get set. Go. Oh, you didn't get set. Every single time they don't get set. And almost every single time, Canada's worst drivers go faster than they can control. Oh, oh my god! Wow, look at how fast they're going. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. Did I hit anything now? Oh, Brandon! Now, what are you doing there? Come on. I turned the wheel and I wasn't looking in my mirror. Alexis isn't looking either. Alexis! What did you hit? A box. Go as fast as you can, not as fast as you can. Neither of you guys are anywhere close to good enough drivers to go that speed. Calm down and drive without hitting anything. Like, that's not even possible. It's always possible to not hit anything. Were you, were you looking in this mirror at all? No. Alexis is even hitting in the wide open turnaround section. No, no, we're still good. We're still good. Am I close to that one? I'm not your mirror. Brandon can't make it into the turnaround area. I'm trying. The turn's difficult. He's constantly oversteering. What the And he's constantly freaking out. I can't. I hit the brake through the gas too hard. Yes, so I learn from to. that. 11 and a half minutes after she started, Alexis finishes. That overall wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Alexis hit things on six separate occasions. The goal is to hit nothing. <laughs> That's not possible. 
Before getting his driver's license, Brandon took 20 hours of professional lessons. During those lessons, the only reversing he did was while parking. Which one did I hit? How do you not know what one you hit? I don't know! That's the one, like, is it behind me? Well, you're not using what Tim taught you if you don't know. No, because I don't know! What I don't know is why reversing is rarely taught by driving teachers. At least you're learning. That's good. When we come back... That's the thing I'm not supposed to do. Carlene and Desi compete head-to-head. -head. Desi! And Tim takes Darius on a public drive. This is where I would lose my mind. I would want to just snap. I would want to get out and spit on this guy's face because he's a piece of But he's not. He's, he's legally changing lanes, and now I, I get that. And... Canada's worst drivers are competing in head-to-head -head reverse races. I never reverse. Before Desi and Carlene compete, though... So I'm actually looking back like this. They're getting Tim's reversing lesson. See, see how much steering I'm doing? Mm -hmm. On your marks, get set, go! Well, sure. Well, you, you didn't get set. I can't see out there. I Oh, I can see there. While Carlene stares at her backup camera and goes nowhere fast. You got it. Desi reverses the way Tim taught her to. I think I know who's going to win. But as she so often does, Don't, uh... Desi drives faster than she can handle. Oh, I'm so vexed right now. Again? Again? Really? My rage is like taking over my body right now. Come on. While I calm Desi down. No, I'm crooked. Carlene continues to stare at her screen. And go nowhere. How were you taught to reverse? By staring at the screen? No. No. So go the way you were taught. It'll work. Right. I keep thinking that Desi is suddenly going to start driving perfectly. But that's just not the case. Oh. At all. I hate driving like this. Desi hates driving like this because it causes her physical pain. Is your back wrecked from so many crashes? Yeah, and my arm. Seriously. 18 minutes after starting. No, poop! Carlene needs to be retaught the entire lesson. Now put your hand at 12 o'clock. Got it. Look at me and crawl the car. Doing it. Carlene is going to take a lot of work. <sighs> oh, my God. Last episode, Darius showed perfect reversing skills. Good, good, good. So, instead of teaching him something he already knows how to do, Tim is taking Darius on a public drive where he's learning that Darius, who, incidentally, has an assault charge pending against him, has traditionally driven aggressively. Because I was raised like that. My, my dad is a crazy road rager, and mm. he's a racist, and he's, uh, you know. And I've, I've grown up with that, watching that. But now I'm understanding that I don't want to be that person. I want to be a better person for myself, for my mom, for everybody around me. Last episode, Darris confessed to the panel of experts that he only came to rehab so his mother would keep on paying his insurance bills. For that reason, 
Tim has spent the last hour challenging Darris on his claim that he has truly changed. Do you feel different than when we started way back at the parking lot? Yeah, I definitely feel a lot more unrelaxed. I'm getting hot, I'm getting sweaty. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little pissed off because I really don't like you, but uh, that's fine. So what is it that you don't like about me? Um, I really don't like your confrontationalness, to be quite honest. Okay. But I definitely do uh, appreciate you. I, you know, if I don't like you, I mean, it's definitely all a learning process, right? Like, at least I'm vocalizing to you that, you know, I don't like you because of this reason. Maybe Darius has changed. He drives with Tim for two full hours and never once drives aggressively. If you have any questions, you know that I'm around. I uh, still don't like you, though. That's OK. When we come back, Whoa. it's our annual Eye of the Needle Challenge. You OK down there? want to go. It's the most important lesson we have here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center, and that's because steering a car, just like aiming a bullet, requires staring at exactly where you want that deadly missile to wind up. To teach Canada's worst drivers the concept of looking where they want to go, our high-speed expert, Philippe Letourneau is standing by. Hopefully, this lesson leaves Canada's worst drivers neither shaken nor stirred, because when it's all said and done, they will be driving through our eye of the needle. This is an incredibly undignified pose, I feel. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. They will be driving through the eye of the needle. For this training, Philippe has set up a single cone. And I want you to hit that cone okay. at 50 kilometers per hour, right in the middle, right in the middle, right in the middle of the car. It sounds simple, because it is simple. What made you hit I the I looked cone? right at it. You never thought about any steering input? Not really. Nobody thinks about steering during this exercise. They simply stare at the cone, Ugh. and they drive into the cone. This is why we constantly say, look where you want to go. Perfect. Phase two of this training is driving between a pair of cones. But Philippe has added a third. Why did I leave the middle one there? I don't know. It is. It's a reference point. By looking at the center cone, Canada's worst drivers go cleanly between the two outside cones. Except for one person. Why did you hit the passenger cone? Alexis hits. I'm at 60. Because she can't resist looking at the outside cones. I don't get it. I don't get why I keep hitting the side cone. With the middle cone removed, can Alexis focus on the gap? Look at the gap. Look at the gap. As soon as we got too close, I was focused on those cones. If you sneak a peek at a cone, you'll hit that cone. If you can stare at the center of the gap, though, Yap it, yap it. There we go. You will drive through the gap. Perfect. Et voila. This year's Eye of the Needle course consists of five randomly positioned arches, which must be steered through at 70 kilometers an hour. And the vehicle that Canada's worst drivers will be steering is our brand new 
yet slightly worn Mustang. Let's do this thing. Barroom, up to 70. Here we go. 50, 60, look at the course too. 70 is right there. Straight through the center. Don't have to look at the edges, swish. All the way to the outside, straight through the center, swish. Straight through the center, swish. I always duck. Still, 14 years later. Oh, that one's a long check. Over. The eye of the needle always leaves me breathless. What will it do to Canada's worst drivers? We're about to find out. Carly is terrified about the speed. <laughs> Just need to get control here. <sighs> okay, I've got to get to get to control. <sighs> Okay. You emotionally ready to do this? Not completely sure about that. Maybe you won't tackle this demon today, but you'll at least, you know, rough it up a little bit. And you will tackle it before you leave here. Yes, I will. You can go whenever you're ready. Headed for the first arch, Carlene looks like she's on the verge of a panic attack. <laughs> But through the first arch, she's fine. Will she manage to pull off a successful run? Carlene's panic attack takes six full minutes to subside. I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> I will be. I'll get there, I promise. <laughs> Desi has a habit of inadvertently speeding. Try to maintain a civilized, normal, requested speed, which is 70. I'll try really hard. The coast is clear. You can go whenever you're ready. Okay. Yo. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. 80, I don't. 80. 80. Oh. Yo. Okay. Yo. <laughs> oh. Oh. Fast. Oh. oh. Instead of sticking to 70 kilometers an hour. As he sped past 90. Just... Well, I'm gonna look at the speedometer while I'm trying to go through I, these things. I, know. I don't think so. I'm, I'm looking where I'm going. I don't give a how fast I'm going. Darius, the road rager who says he's reformed, is up next. All right, you got this? There's a lot of story there with Darius. He's been in violent altercations, he's driven really recklessly. He's had a good, close relative die beside him. I don't know. There's something else I don't know about, which has influenced nice. Darius's driving, and I'm about to hear that story. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Aim. Woo! Nice. <laughs> Darius's brother is in prison for killing a man with his truck. He got into a drunken rage, a blackout rage, they call it. And then he made a decision that altered his life and lives of others around him, and, and it wasn't a good decision. What decision did he make? He was charged in the brutalist fashion, second-degree murder. Second-degree murder, and convicted? And convicted, yes. Because he hunted down a guy and killed him with the car, with the truck? He didn't hunt him down. He was in the parking lot. How long ago? This was coming up eight years now. Eight years? Eight years ago. What does this have to do with your everyday driving? I would say a lot. I would say a lot, too. Be one thing if the crime was committed with any other weapon, but the fact that it's a car, it's a vehicle, you're in one every day, and it's, um, it's a problem. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm happy to st share my story. Darius's mother wasn't happy that he started telling that story. But now that it's out, she's OK. If it helps you get better, I'm all for it. I didn't think that was the problem. Hmm. But obviously, I was wrong. It's hard to hear the truth, eh? Yeah. Canada's worst drivers have learned to look where they want to go. I did it. Look at that. And now... Oh, no! <laughs> they're trying to put that lesson to good oh. use on this year's Eye of the Needle course. Brittany says that when she drives, she never looks where she wants to go. Where do you look? My phone, my stereo, um the car beside me, the car behind me, the car in front of me. Just all over the place. Everywhere. Look where I want to go. 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 I'm not I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Perfect, you got it. You didn't knock it over. You got this. You got this. That's Brittany's sister, Mia. Brittany, you did that. Whoa! I'm so sorry, Mia. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. For a second there, I thought she was going to get it, but no. Reminiscent of any accidents you had in the past? Yeah. What What one? Just going underneath the bridge. What happened underneath the bridge? I smashed into it because I wasn't paying attention. Brittany has a lot to learn. 20 crashes and you never figured out maybe I should start paying attention. Mm-mm. Wow. No. Never. Brandon just wants to get this challenge over with. Look where you want to go. Okay. A large part of Brandon doesn't want to drive at all. 70. But last fall, Brandon's father suffered a heart attack and was diagnosed with serious cancer. And Brandon Breathe. is the only driver in the family. Are you going 70? Stop, stop, stop. Brandon makes it. However, the stress of this challenge results in a full-blown panic attack. Are you okay? Brandon, Brandon! 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 Brandon may be freaking out, but he passed the challenge. That's me patting you on the back, buddy. I don't know why you're crying, because you've done good. Oh, I'm so I'm like nervous and anxious and oh, I yeah. don't. I'm never doing that again. Alexis is already complaining. Like, I got the sun in my eyes. Ugh. We haven't even started okay. yet. The sun's it's in my eyes. No, it's not OK. Oh, I'm putting my seatbelt on. Because I don't have an advantage like everyone else did today. Oh. And so is that what Shamala told you to do? Just sit in the car and be pessimistic and pout and say stuff like, I wish I didn't live in a world where the sun went down every day? <laughs> I didn't think you could hear me. Here we go. Last run of the day on the eye of the needle. You think she can put it together? I tend to think she's going to speed and hit a lot. Let's see. Sure enough, Alexis almost immediately speeds up to 90 kilometers an hour. Oh. Good, 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 good. Next. Oh, next. Awesome, 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 awesome. Alexis might be Canada's worst driver. I've seen a couple of those in my day. Oh, my God. Have you? Yeah, like, I've gotten probably six bumper replacements. You've done six bumper replacements. Three on my car that I've only had for a year. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers tell our experts what they've learned so far. You put the phone down and you got to focus on what's in front of you, and I've never done that. You've never focused on what's in front of you never. while driving? Never.
In this episode of Canada's Worst Driver, Darris had a public drive with Tim, during which he showed no signs of road rage. I want to be a better person for myself, for my mom, for everybody around me. And on the two challenge courses he tackled, oy, oy, oy. Woo! Darris drove absolutely perfectly. Oh, beautiful. Normally, the person who drives perfectly, they want to graduate, and they deserve to graduate, and it's time for them to go. Is that what you want to do is, is graduate, or do you want to stay here? I want to graduate. You do want to graduate? Yeah. OK. I want him to stay. Why? I want him to, to see if he's capable of being cut off and not losing any anymore. Right. And that is my fear, is that he'll hurt somebody or himself. And I don't want to have two sons that hurt someone else. Now that Darius has had time to reflect, does he still want to graduate? Yes, I want to graduate. And why is it that you want to graduate? The reason I want to graduate is to just get back to my life and, and work at becoming a better person, get seek counseling and... Which is one of the reasons why I think you should stick around, because we got a counselor here. Do you want to talk to Shamala um, about your brother? No. You don't? No, my brother already doesn't like what I said. Why does that matter more than what you'd like? Because I'm my brother's keeper. You're not. He's not here. He, he's in prison, and he will be for a long time. I, I think that you could um, help yourself more than you know by talking more. I understand that. So, Darius wants to graduate. Does anyone else want to graduate? No. Oh, gosh, no. 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 <sighs> no. No, I don't want to graduate. I want to graduate, but I, I think that I definitely need to stay here and learn some more skills for myself. So, should Darius graduate? Well, you know me, Andrew. Normally, you know, just by his pure driving skill, I would say send him home. But there's something in me that tells me we got to keep him around. I wouldn't feel right graduating him. Um, I, you know, I think it, letting him loose at this point in time would be a disservice. And so what are we supposed to teach him? I hate to say this, but I'm not sure that he's our issue anyway. His driving is good. He is an anger management uh, thing. He has a history of violence. But we're not a show about that. We're a show about driving. Do I think he's going to be a good person out there? No. But I'm not sure we have the answers here for the problems he has. If it's in anybody's wheelhouse, Shamla, it's yours. Right. And so do you feel confident if we kept him here that you could help make him on the road safer? Mm -hmm. I think so, because these issues are connected to driving for him. He's different than the other people that want the help that we can give. This guy doesn't want that. He just wants mom to pay for insurance. Mm. Well, that's it for the second episode of Canada's Worst Driver, season 14. So much to talk about this episode, but I'm gonna keep it brief, okay? Darius, you're not getting to graduate quite yet. I don't know what to say, but I do know what to ask. Which one of these six people is Canada's worst driver? On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. <laughs> the nominees learn that their rear wheels do not follow their front wheels when going around a corner. Let me do my best Tim Danter face. Now, do you see me in your mirror? They're shown how to use their side mirrors when reversing around a corner. You're good. 
Okay, good. I'm in the wrong place. And everyone learns how to look into their blind spot. On our annual shoulder check challenge. So what is it that you don't like about me?